Hello folks. Uh, today I'm going to be playing around with this welder here. Um, I know these uh, small flux core wire feed welders are pretty inexpensive. They're pretty prolific. It's what a lot of people have. It's what a lot of people use for you know little repairs and projects around the house. And they're pretty inexpensive. They're easy to pick up just about anywhere. I just picked this one up at the Home Depot. Basically, there's, it's what a lot of people use to make some welding repairs out there. And I just figured, you know what? I want to get my hands on one, take a look at it, see how well it does. Uh, maybe weld some stuff up with it, do some cut and etching, and, and basically just see uh, see what you can actually get out of one of these. Um, I have some materials of different thicknesses. Um, so I'm going to weld up some joints, do some cut and etching, see what we get and uh, basically just see uh, how well this welder works. This is the Lincoln Electric Weld Pack HD. Um, like I said, I picked it up from Home Depot. It's the cheapest one they sell. Uh, it's under 300 bucks, and I'm just going to be using the spool of included wire that it came with, which is just some Lincoln NR211 uh, flux core wire, and uh, we'll just play around with it, see what we can get out of it. All right, so here we are. I got some joints welded up. Uh, just a random selection of joints and different shapes, um, just kind of playing around. Uh, the machine's really easy to set up, and I'm just running it off of a just a 120 volt, 20 amp receptacle in my garage, and uh, things went pretty well. Um, full disclosure: I do have experience with TIG and stick welding, um, but I have this is the first time I have ever run a wire feed welder. So uh, first time I've ever held a, a MIG or in this case just flux core gasless uh, gun in my hand so first time I've run it and <clears throat> um, not too bad um, machine was easy to set up got the wire in there um, they, they pretty much limit the amount of settings that you're gonna have to do and adjustments you're gonna have to do even on like the uh, the wire feed mechanism um, it's all pretty much just when you put it together it's spring-loaded to be a preset tension and away you go and I found that it worked fine I didn't have any issues um, I obviously don't have tons of hours of use on it yet but you know, as a first timer, just throwing together some joints, I had no problems at all. So, um, you know, might not be the most professional looking welds, but it didn't do too bad. Um, I'll get a few, uh, a few more duplicate joints welded up so that we have a few different things to cut and etch. And we will get that done and we'll see how, what, kind of, what kind of results we're getting for penetration on this material. And just uh, one more note, I did have the machine basically maxed out most of the time. I am using the included wire, which is uh, an 035 diameter. Okay, so I've cut and etched a few of the joints and we're just going to take a look at the penetration we got. Uh, this is the eighth inch material, just a, just a simple eighth inch T-joint. And you can see we got uh, pretty good uh, penetration here. Um, now this is within the stated limits of the machine, so it's not real surprising that we got good penetration. You can see even right down into the very base of the joint we have some fusion. We have the weld really just going right down into the root of the joint and we have decent penetration on the material both sides. Um, good tie in at both of the toes, um, real good penetration. This was just a straight drag joint, so, but uh, yeah, you can see real good penetration here on the eighth inch material. Now here we have the 3 16th material, and actually we have pretty decent penetration here too. Um, you know, pretty good tie in up here. Um, this one, it's a little harder to see, but um, pretty good tie in at the top and bottom and some decent penetration all the way down past the root so you know pretty good penetration all the way down in now um, <clears throat> you know this is just a, a small little sample um, so you know the part heats up quick and it's it's easy to get good penetration on something like this or easier to get penetration on something like this versus you know some big large item that has a lot of metal that's really going to suck the heat out but even still I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that for you know just a little 120 amp, or sorry, 120 volt, uh, 88 amp is what it's rated welder. Um, it does say it'll do more than that for short periods, but but anyway, yeah, 3 16 material, uh, fairly decent penetration. Now here's the uh, 3 8 inch material. This one's kind of hard to see. Um, much less penetration. Um, still did get some though. Um, doesn't look like we have any cold lap at the toes or anything. It seems like the toes are tied in pretty nice. Um, the bead is, you know, definitely appears colder. It's kind of lumpier and, you know, say the eighth inch material that, you know, you can see lays pretty flat. But even still, um, I, I'm kind of surprised at how well it did on the on the uh, three eighths. I mean, you can see 
there is a little bit of penetration there. Now, having said that, keep in mind, comparing this little bit of penetration that we got to the actual thickness of the material, this really wouldn't be, you know, if you're using 3 8 material, it's probably because you're using it for something that needs to be really strong. And, you know, quite frankly, this really, <laughs> this is a pretty small weld. It doesn't have a ton of penetration, but, you know, even still, it's kind of impressive for what it is. I'm also going to do a few joints. Uh, all these joints were just a straight drag. Um, I think you get a little bit pen better penetration down into the root of the joint with just a straight drag, but you get a little bit wider profile with a little more heat into the weld if you do a weave. So I'm going to do some weave joints too, and we'll see how those look. Okay, so here's the et etch of the eighth inch material, and you can just very faintly see the outline of the weld nugget here. And as you can see on the eighth inch, we're getting a fair bit of penetration. You know, the toes are tied in nicely, and it, it you know, we got a decent bit of penetration, nice flat bead. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more penetration into the toe of the weld there, especially since I was actually tracing the front of the puddle with the uh, with the wire to kind of, you know, try and burn it real, burn it in deep, but. Yeah. But hey, you know, not too bad. All right, so here's the cut and etch of the 3 16 material. Uh, you can see quite a bit less penetration than what we had with the 8th inch. Um, but still, we still are getting a little bit of penetration. Um, so, I mean, you know, it, it's not too bad. Uh, still have a nice flat weld profile. Um, you know, it's tied in at the toes, and we, we're getting a little bit of penetration. Now here's the etch of the 3 8 inch material. And you can see far less penetration um, up here on the top side. It's it's kind of going in a little bit, but you know here on this bottom side, it's just it's tied in, but it's just just barely. They're not not a lot of penetration there on this three eighths. So I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised with this little welder. Um, like I said before, I just kind of picked it up to see what they were all about because they're they're pretty cheap and it's what a lot of people are using, and you hear a lot of mixed things about them and I just thought you know what I'm gonna see what I can get out of it myself and that it did a lot better than I expected um, you know on the penetration obviously eighth inch and down no problems there plenty of penetration um, above that it's not rated for it and you know obviously the penetration does go down pretty pretty significantly especially on like a 3 8 which is just you know way thicker than what this welder is rated to do but I gotta say even on the 3 8 material you know, not a lot of penetration, but I didn't see a lot of cold lap or lack of fusion that I kind of expected to see. So it does a lot better than I would have thought for just a little 120 welder, but pretty good for what it is. Um, you know, I was able to set it up quickly and just, just start welding with it. And I, you know, don't have a ton of experience with it yet. I mean, what you can see on the table there is about 90% of my total experience with the thing so far. So, you know, obviously not a real long-term test, long-term review or anything like that, but you know, pretty confident that, you know, if I had a project that I had to do and I had to do it with this machine, um, you know, I could practice on some scrap pieces, get the settings dialed in, get the project done with this welder and, and have no issues. Um, so pretty good little machine for, for, the, for the price. And like I said, for, you know, just being a 120 machine, obviously you are giving up some things for the cost. Um, you know, probably a little bit less serviceability than some of the more, the, the more expensive units. And, you know, obviously being on, you know, 120 only, you're definitely limited on power. Um, you can only go get so much out of a 120 outlet. Um, you know, you're definitely giving up some, some welding power versus a machine that would be capable of 220. 
but you know within its limitations you know for the cost being a 120 machine i think it does pretty good um it does come with a few little just accessories this is just a wire brush with i guess a chipping hammer kind of end on it eh, it's not great that's kind of pretty cheap but whatever it gets the job done i guess um, it does come with a spare uh, contact tip and this is inside this foam is some uh, just some lenses for like a little handheld face shield that it comes with uh, pretty cheesy little face shield I would say just get a proper helmet um, not only is the helmet going to protect you better but I would say just as importantly you don't have to hold it <laughs> so you know if you're using that little face shield one of your hands is is holding that thing up over your eyes so you know that kind of limits your versatility what you can do you know because you don't have a free hand so that's kind of cheesy but that's what this is there's little lenses there that the little face shield doesn't have the lenses installed the way it comes so um comes with one pound of wire um you just flip this little door up and the uh, you might not be able to see it but the roll of wires in there like i said it's just some lincoln nr211 self-shielded flux core wire uh, you could get additional rolls of the same stuff at uh, home depot where i got this for about 12 bucks um, and then you can get larger rolls that, um, honestly, the, the larger rolls are a lot cheaper per pound than buying the little one pound rolls. But it does come with a pound, it gets you started, and that's what I used for all of this, and it, I didn't have any trouble. Uh, one interesting thing I did note, um, with pretty much all of the recommended settings in the manual, um, no matter what you have the voltage switches at, they always pretty much say to stay on setting 9. And I found that the wire feed speed setting is tied to these voltages so even if you leave it set at nine you're going to get a lot more wire feed speed when set on high two than you will say on low one so it, it kind of automatically adjusts the wire speed feed per the voltage having but at the same time whatever voltage you have it set at you still can adjust the wire speed feed or wire feed speed from there with the knob so um, it's a little bit of a simplicity setup to where you know, they make it so that it kind of adjusts the wire feed speed as needed automatically when you change the voltage settings. So it makes it pretty simple. I mean, you know, you look at the chart inside the door here and it pretty much says for this thickness, put this switch combination, for this thickness, put that switch combination. And, you know, it, from what I found just messing around, it was pretty close. You know, I, I pretty much did all of this without messing with the settings. Like I said, if I was gonna be doing a project with this tube or, you know, with some of these other things, I, I may tweak the settings a little bit just to to fine tune it if I found issues with certain joint configurations or something like that. But um, as it as it is, the recommended settings seem to do just fine most of the time. Um, but there you have it. That's what you can get out of a just a cheap, or at least what I was able to get out of a uh, cheap flux core wire feed welder. Uh, no uh, no real issues to speak of. Um, like I said, it you know one day's use and not in a day in terms of time that I've had it, but I've really only welded just a little bit with it. So, you know, it's not exactly long-term reliability review or anything like that, but it was a little bit surprising to me. I just wanted to see, you know, what these were all about and I was pleasantly surprised. But, you know, it's a pretty good little machine for the money, I think. Uh, not bad at all. So if you have any questions, uh, post them up down below and I'll answer if I can. Well, like I said, you know, I've had it for a day, so <laughs> bear with me if you have any real specific questions but feel free to ask and i will answer if i can hopefully you found some of this interesting or helpful maybe you learned something and uh thanks for watching take care